let's take a look at my minimalist travel wardrobe. It's comprised mostly of merino wool clothing and mostly dresses. When it comes to minimalist wardrobes, there are two main types. There's the capsule wardrobe and then the uniform. It's very common to see a lot of minimalist wardrobes described as capsule wardrobes. So basically in a capsule wardrobe, you have basic pieces that can be reworn over and over again. And then seasonally, you'll add in additional pieces to your wardrobe. So maybe have a spring, summer, fall and winter version. With a capsule wardrobe, there's separate tops and bottoms that you can mix and match in a bunch of different combinations to come up with different outfits. In contrast, with a personal style uniform, you think of your favorite outfit to wear, whatever makes you feel the best, you're most comfortable in, and then you wear that every day. Or, you know, slight variations of it. The most common example that comes to mind of a personal uniform for a minimalist is a black t-shirt and jeans, but it certainly does not have to be that. It can be anything, whatever you personally like to wear. Personally, every time I've tried to go more towards a capsule wardrobe, I end up reverting back to a uniform. There's so much guidance out there on how to create a capsule that it kind of feels like you have to do it that way. But it's not the only option for a minimalist wardrobe. I'd rather not have to mix and match pieces to make an outfit each day. I just don't want to have to think about that. What works best for you is going to come down to your reasons behind choosing minimalism. So for me, the first reason I like a small wardrobe is just to make my life simpler, more easier, have fewer decisions to make throughout the day. The second big reason is that we are a full-time traveling family. Our family is currently in Southeast Asia. We travel long-term for about a year at a time. We might return home for a year or so. Right now, our travels are indefinite. So when we have to pack everything back up into our suitcase about every month or two and move to a new apartment, it makes it much easier if the whole family has minimalist wardrobes. And we've become so accustomed to this that even when we are back home, we still keep the same small size. We try not to add too many more pieces. Another personal reason for me is that I tend to lean towards the zero waste movement. I'm definitely not perfect, especially lately, not quite where I want to be, but I don't want to participate in fast fashion of just buying clothes just because it's a weekend activity to go out and shop and then shoving those clothes at the back of the closet, not wearing them, and eventually they're doomed for the landfill. I would rather have very few clothes that I really love, I really wear, and I wear them to pieces. So for me, my personal style uniform is merino wool dresses. More specifically, I really like ones that are tank sleeve and midi length. That's just what happens to be more flattering on me. And I like dresses that go down past my knee while we're traveling. I can always cover up skin more or add some warmth simply by adding a cardigan and then adding leggings under. I currently have seven outfits in my wardrobe. Four of them are merino wool dresses and then I have three additional outfits as well. This is definitely more than is needed. I know that personally I can get by with five outfits. I did that for about a year when we were living in Bangkok. So seven is actually seeming kind of like a big wardrobe for me. I will get into some brands and examples here in a minute, but I just want to say up front that merino refers to a certain breed of sheep that has especially soft wool. So when I say merino wool, I'm not referring to one specific brand. That's just the fiber the clothes are made out of. Merino wool dresses are my favorite thing to wear both while we're traveling and while we're back home in Hawaii. We've tried a lot of different travel clothes over the years from the frumpy synthetic polyesters to the better thin Pima cottons and finally settled on merino wool. I think a big part of that is that we travel in hot, humid climates where you can be sweating a ton. So I was always looking for a better alternative to not end up with my clothes drenched in sweat, stuck to my body. Like what is the best material for hot, humid weather? And that's why I've come upon merino wool. And specifically in these hot, humid, tropical climates, I like thin, lightweight merino wool jersey fabric. So it is a very thin fabric. It's not like a thick, bulky jacket or sweater would be. It's nice and thin and breezy. Wool fabric is very breathable, so it allows sweat and vapor to escape away from your body. That's one of the things that makes it so good for these humid conditions. 
I love that merino wool dresses can be worn more casually with sandals or dressed up a bit with flats. So I feel like the same dress can easily take me from day to night. Another reason that I love dresses is it makes it so easy to get dressed in the morning. I just pull out the dress from the closet. It's one piece to slip on over my undergarments and then I slip on my shoes on the way out the door. We don't usually wear shoes inside the house. I have some clips in this video wearing shoes just so you can see how they match with my dresses. I prefer wearing solid colors over prints because I feel if you're repeating a solid color dress multiple times, it's a lot less noticeable than repeating a print. So say if I went out to dinner with a friend and I was wearing a black dress and then the next time they see me, I'm in a black dress, they probably won't remember that I'm wearing the same thing. But if I have some really loud patterned piece on and I show up in that the next time, it's probably gonna be more noticeable. But I've just become accustomed to wearing the same things all the time. And that's okay. Our society says you need a new outfit for every event, every get together, but you really don't. It's okay to wear the exact same thing every day. Currently my wardrobe is very dark colored. I noticed that when putting together this video recently, I've donated, gotten rid of a few pieces that had holes or were threadbare, and I just came down to a wardrobe that has a lot of black, navy blue, and dark teal. I love those colors, but I would like to mix it up and start adding some lighter spring colors in when I get to the point of replacing some of my items. But those lighter colors might show stains more and sweat more, so there's that trade-off. I do like to have at least one full length maxi skirt or dress in my wardrobe at a time, along with something that covers my shoulders. I like to call this my temple outfit. So on days where we're going to visit something like a temple in Thailand, it's appropriate to wear a long skirt or dress and have your shoulders covered. I don't have an ideal outfit like that in my wardrobe at the moment. My skirt I used to wear just ripped along the waist. I think my best option at the moment is my unbound dress and then and I can either pair a t-shirt over that or pair a cardigan over it to cover my shoulders. We live and travel in hot, humid, tropical climates, so this wardrobe works for me year round. However, if you're wondering what about a winter wardrobe, I want to reassure you that you can also use this same formula or way of dressing. If I was going somewhere cold, I would get two or three dresses that are long sleeve made of a heavier weight material. For example, Smitten Merino, they offer some dresses out of a wool fleece, or there's another fabric, Ponte, and it's a thicker, heavier duty wool than the thin jersey ones that I currently wear. So heavier wool, long sleeves, I would pair it with either wool tights or thicker wool leggings underneath with some wool socks and boots, and then you can put on a cardigan, a jacket, a hat, a scarf, but you can still use the formula of dresses, cover-up type jacket, leggings underneath and make that work for pretty much any climate. In case I didn't mention these already, here are some of the reasons that I love wool. It's natural, it's breathable, it's temperature regulating, which means that it can help to keep you cool when it's hot by allowing that sweat to evaporate away, but it also helps keep you warm in cooler conditions. I also like the sheen and drape of merino wool. To me, it looks more elegant than cotton dress would. Thin wool is easy to wash and dry. I normally machine wash our wool on a cold 30 degrees Celsius delicate cycle, and then I hang it to dry. No putting it in the dryer but it's fairly easy to do. It's also easy enough to wash it in the sink. If you have a very small wardrobe, just a few shirts, and you wanna be hand washing those, you can do that as well. It dries quickly overnight, so I would say my wool pieces are my fastest drying, and then cotton pieces take a little bit longer. I had some rayon dresses previously, and those took the longest to dry. Let's take a close look at my current minimalist travel wardrobe. I currently have seven outfits. That's four merino wool dresses, one wool skirt plus shirt, one mumsy overalls, and one cotton dress. I currently don't own a single pair of pants or trousers. All that I have are leggings for layering under my dresses. I have an unbound merino wool travel dress in black in size small. Thank you so much to Unbound for sending me this dress as well as some other items for myself and my husband to try out. We've been longtime fans of Unbound Merino as my husband has been wearing their clothes for over three years now. And very recently they launched a women's line, so I'm excited to get to try their clothes now finally as well. The Unbound dress is a blend, so merino wool, nylon, and spandex. 
From the first time I put it on, I could tell that that really gives it more stretch and recovery and helps it hug the body more. I'm interested to see over time how that combination works. So far, it's very soft and very comfortable to wear. Unfortunately, a lot of the women's items are already sold out as they were really popular and went super fast. I will link to their website below and you can use the code KENCHOQUEST to save 10% and hopefully they will be restocking some of the women's items soon. I have a metamorphic dress by Truly Karis in soft teal and black. This option has pockets if you like that. It's my most dressy out of all the dresses I have and it's made of 100% merino wool jersey. I have two dresses from Ibex that were my first merino wool dresses. I love them over the years. Unfortunately, Ibex is not currently offering dresses or skirts. Years ago, they had a great lifestyle travel line, some of my favorite merino wool pieces, but since they've closed and reopened, they're now just offering things more like shirts and pants. But I will leave links below of some other options of where you can find specifically dresses if you're looking for that. First up, I have a black Ibex dress with a cross back. For me, this one's very reminiscent of my ballet days. I have a navy blue Ibex dress with cap sleeves. This one is just super easy to wear. It's one of my more casual pieces. I feel like if I'm even just taking my baby out for a walk or running to the grocery store, it's an easy option to slip on. I have one pencil skirt from Humbird Wool that I pair with a top. This pencil skirt is a combo of wool plus tensile. It's nice and stretchy and comfortable. I wear it either with a short sleeve shirt that Unbound Merino sent me, which is 100% merino wool and oh so soft, or I wear it with a long sleeve option that I bought from Truly Karis. And that shirt has been great for wearing in the malls when it's cold and air conditioned. I have one Mumsy, a skirt option, which is a combination of overalls and baby carrier. Now denim is not the most practical for traveling. It tends to be heavy, it takes a long time to dry, but I just could not miss the opportunity with my last baby to give this wonderful innovative product a try. These have been safety tested as actual baby carriers. They're safe for baby wearing, but it's also a piece of clothing. Now what drew me to this is for years now, I end up just wearing a baby carrier as part of my outfit. If I ever take the baby, the toddler out of it, I've still got this carrier on me. So what I loved about the Mumsy is if I take my toddler out, I can just tighten up the straps and I'm just wearing an outfit. I don't have this separate piece, the carrier to try to put away or do something with. So I especially love wearing the Mumsy on days where the little one's gonna be in and out, my arms and down over and over again. I only wish I had gotten a Mumsy even sooner when he was a smaller baby and it would have fit him even better. And they designed their products so they can also fit well during pregnancy. So you can wear it with a pregnant belly and then wear it with your baby. And when your baby's not in it, you're just wearing an outfit. Brilliant. I pair it along with a cotton t-shirt that Fairgrounds sent me for free when they sent me some shoes to share with you on this channel. I have a separate video all about my travel shoes. I have one cotton dress by Latched Mama. It's specifically a dress for breastfeeding in. I previously had one of their rompers and my husband didn't like that it was really big and bulky when I rolled it up to pack it. So I replaced it with a dress that's also big and bulky. But I love wearing this Latched Mama dress. To go along with my seven outfits, I also have pieces for layering, for warmth or sun protection. My two must-have layering pieces when wearing mostly dresses are a cardigan and leggings. I have a very thin, lightweight cardigan that I got years ago from Ibex. I love it. It's super thin, so I can bring it with us on a day out and about, put it in the diaper bag. It doesn't take up much room. If it's somewhere sunny, I can throw it on for sun protection. If I just need to cover my shoulders, put it on. If I get a little cold in a restaurant or a shopping mall, wear it. It's a really great item to have. Highly recommend a thin, flowy, open front cardigan. The next layering piece I highly recommend is a pair of leggings. I definitely like to wear these on the airplane. It can get super cold, especially on long haul flights. And these days they're a lot less likely to provide blankets. I currently have a really thin pair of leggings. It's kind of bright turquoise color from Icebreaker. They're not my favorite. I didn't realize when I was ordering them how thin they are. They're also kind of sporty look, which doesn't pair so well with my dresses. I'm thinking about purchasing a pair of black leggings from Unbound Merino that's a lot thicker wool, but since it's black, I think it would match better with my outfits. I have a wool hoodie that's a lot thicker and warmer for wearing on airplane days. That's also by Icebreaker. 
So on the airplane days, you know, I'll wear my dress, but I'll wear my leggings, my socks, my hoodie, just whatever I can to keep me warm. I also have one wool filled jacket that's nylon on the outside, wool stuffing on the inside. That's a piece by Ibex as well. And we only need that if we go somewhere cooler climates. I purchased it when we were visiting Japan in the fall and it was really starting to cool down. It's pretty compressible and we keep our two jackets in a compression packing cube so they don't take up too much room in our luggage. I also have two long sleeve wool shirts. One I mentioned before by Truly Caris and then I have an Ibex cowl neck one. That one is a thicker material. So again, I mostly wore that when we were in Japan in cooler weather or when we went to California in the spring and it was cool. I also have two sets of merino wool pajamas. They're mostly by Truly Caris. I have their sleep shorts and the regular and the pedal. I have a mama flowy tank that goes with one pair. I'd like to get at least one more of those kind of lounge pajama sets, especially when you're a mom and you have messy kids or when you're traveling long term, you spend a lot of time just lounging around, working, taking care of the kids, homeschooling at home. And so I like to have something that it's okay if I get a bit dirty in to wear at home and then put on a nice full dress when going out. So I think I need at least one more pajama lounge set. I have two pairs of shoes, one pair of seaside sandals by Field Grounds. Thank you so much for sending those to me and one pair of ballet flats. I did a separate video all about the only two pairs of shoes you need to travel the world indefinitely. So you can watch that after this one. If I add up the pieces of clothing and pajamas and count each pair of shoes as one piece, that totals 21 pieces. It would be possible to get by with fewer pieces and there's people packing a whole lot more as well. I also have a knee high pair of wool socks that I mostly wear on the airplane. I also do have Merino wool underwear. I have two pairs of shorts from Ibex, which are great for pairing under dresses. I have some briefs by Ibex. I have underwear from Yawning Mama and Rainbow Waters. Right now I do have merino wool bras that work for nursing from Icebreaker, Yawning Mama, and Humbird. Other items I have are two hats, one more baseball hat that I wear almost every day, and a wider brimmed sun hat. I also have two swimsuits. I have one by Yawning Mama that's kind of custom made. I really love that. I'll link the Yawning Mama shop below. They're located in Nevada, USA. And I have one that I purchased in Malaysia. I love getting my swimsuits here because they tend to be more conservative than the American versions. I have a long sleeve rash guard that I can pair over. And I also have a pair of shorts to wear as bottoms. I have two cover up skirts that I just couldn't bear to part with, but I don't actually wear them too often. I have two accessories by Lily Jade. I have a black leather crossbody purse, which has been working great for travel. I have a separate video of the essentials I pack in that. And I also have a Lily Jade Jennifer nylon backpack diaper bag, which has worked excellent as a travel diaper bag. I'll link those below as well. Since we're talking about minimalism and you may also be gravitating towards it for some of these eco-friendly zero waste ideas, I wanted to share the things that I think about when I'm going to purchase a new item of clothing. Very first thing I think about is, is it made out of natural material? I personally am okay with maybe 5% elastine in there for the stretch and recovery, but I like at least most of the content to be a natural fiber. Next up, I think, where was it made? I really do like to support local companies. I'm from the USA. I often buy from work at home moms or small shops located in the USA. I do purchase from other places around the world, but I like to think about who is making that clothing. And of course, does it spark joy? Especially because if I buy a new dress, I plan to wear that dress once a week for approximately three years. So am I gonna love it? Am I gonna enjoy it? Am I gonna wanna reach for it for the next three years? Or am I gonna be bored of it after a couple months? In which case, probably not a good option. I also consider what I need to add an additional item into my wardrobe that I don't currently have in order to wear along with that piece. So this is one reason I've really stayed minimalist over the years is since I don't have a lot of tops and bottoms, it's like I wouldn't buy a shirt because I didn't have any bottoms like shorts or pants to go with it. And then I wouldn't buy bottoms because I didn't have a shirt to go with it. So it helps keep it minimal to think to only incorporate new items that can go with the items I already have in my wardrobe. Previously, one of my big considerations was also, can I breastfeed in it? I had a lot of dresses that worked both as maternity, breastfeeding, and keep wearing after that. I wore many of them with two of my babies, kept wearing that same dress over and over again. Of course, price is always a factor, especially when it comes to merino wool clothing, it can be quite expensive. 
However, instead of looking at price first, I look at price about last. And that's because I really like to think of the concept of cost per wear. So you can break it down by thinking about how much you spent on an item, and then how many times you wore that item, how much it ended up costing you each time you wore it. So for example, you might find a dress on sale. It's not really your style, it's not really your color, but it's only $20, so you buy it anyways. You end up wearing that dress two times and then it's hidden at the back of your closet before you donate it. If you wore that $20 dress twice, your cost per wear was $10. Now, for example, I might buy a merino wool dress for $150. But whenever I buy an outfit, my personal plan is to wear it once a week because I tend to have about one week's worth of clothes or a little bit less. And then when I'm buying a new piece, I like to think about it of trying to get at least three years wear out of it. That's not always possible. I bought a lower quality cotton dress from H&M once that only lasted a year before falling apart. But my wool dresses are holding on strong. So just an example, if we say it's a $150 dress, and then there's roughly 50 weeks in a year. It's a little bit more, but we'll say 50 weeks in a year. I'm wearing it for three years, so that's going to be 150 wears. I end up paying about $1 per each time I wear that dress, which to me did sound a little expensive when I did that calculation. I was a little bit surprised. Over a month, that would come out to spending about $30 a month. But when I looked up, on average, Americans are spending quite a bit more than that. So it can be expensive initially to invest in merino wool, especially if you have a large family. So what we do is we gather pieces gradually over time. Maybe I get a dress here, a few years later I get another dress, a while later I get a cardigan. I haven't gone out and bought this entire wardrobe all at once. And I feel it's a whole lot better to be spending that money on high quality pieces that I actually wear instead of just accumulating more and more clothes that's ending up in the closet but not actually getting used. That wraps up my current minimalist wardrobe that I wear for travel or at home. Let me know in the comments below, are you more of a capsule wardrobe person or a personal uniform? Have you tried merino wool dresses and discovered just how wonderful they are? What are your essentials to pack when you're traveling? Our family is traveling long term, so please subscribe for more packing tips and travel inspiration.